All right, we're at Scott's Hot Rod and Customs, Grand National Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Hey, how are you doing, man? How's it going? I'm Cameron from Scott's Hot Rods. Yeah, what do we got here? This is an example of our front, independent front suspension kits. You do your coil over it. Our standard kits come with 11 inch brakes, single piston GM caliper, Ooh. forged steel spindle, two blow floor A arms, CNC adjustable uh, rod ends, and a one piece cross number, and a manual rack. You want now, upgrades, we got plenty of upgrades for you. Most common, we have power rack opinion. Yeah, that's what this one is, right? Yeah, this is power rack, you know, pressure and return, and then one inch solid sway bar. It's the most common upgrades, and then you get some of our motor mounts to complete the job. If you got more spirited driving <laughs> under your belt, we can go with the torsion spine sway bar. So if you're gonna be pushing a little harder, pro touring, auto crossing, and you can also upgrade from the Alden Coiler wrist to the Ritex. Yeah, okay. like these are the right checks, single just one rebound. And then we got brake upgrades, which is not seen here. Right. We got 11s, 12s, 13s, 14s, well wood kits you can add to it. Now, what spindles are these? These, This is a drop, Mustang 2 drop spindle, forged steel spindle. Um, it's the only thing Mustang 2 about our kits. That okay. way you can readily get bearings, right. seals, brake kits. That's cool, and it looks like you can adjust it here for caster, you said? Yeah, so these are stainless steel adjustable rod ends. Um, take these shoulder bolts out. For you, and then you spin in or out to adjust your camber. And then okay. once you get that set, then you go adjust your caster okay. and you can either add shims or move them from the front to the back to add more caster or less caster, depending on your driving style. Does that also help center it in like say the fender or anything like that? Yeah, that could be your fine tune okay. adjustment moving these. And you can already see it's got anti-dive built into it. So it's angled back. All right. And uh, polyurethane? Yes. That's awesome, dude. Beautiful kit, man. Thank you. Where are you guys based out of? Knoxville, Tennessee. Knoxville? I drove through Knoxville. <laughs> they didn't have any gas there. No, I, I took it off. <laughs> These are our motor mount. Whatever motor you got, we have small block Ford, FE, FT, other big block. That's a weird one. Um, <laughs> they all mount like this. This part goes to your block. Okay. And then you have the tubes down, polyurethane bushing, and the kits come standard with a six inch, two six inch D tabs per side. <laughs> they weld to your frame so you can put it in any vehicle. Well, you got options. That's good, man. All right, well. And this 11 inch plain bend rotors are standard rotor and it comes standard with a GM caliper, single piston. Uh, first upgrade would be to a Willwood four piston caliper, still in our standard rotor. If that's not enough for you, you can go to 11 inch or 12 inch with a four piston caliper or a 13 or 14 inch rotor with a six piston caliper. You know, 15 inch wheel, 16 inch wheel, 17 inch wheel, 18 inch wheel, wow. minimum. <laughs> So it's how much stopping power do you really want? No, you only recommend that for, uh, what would you call it, spirited driving? Or yeah, for... so the six piston's a great caliper yeah. on the big stuff. If you're gonna go autocrossing with more spirited driving, you get it with the Aero caliper, Aero 6. Um, it's just a beefier caliper, it's stronger, less flex. If you refer to the, the drag racers yeah. who run a solid rotor, a non-vented rotor, um, you don't want to run those on the street because you'll heat them up and warp them. But with the, the vented road, cut the gap in. That's meant for the street. Um, we drive these, we have these on all of our shot vehicles. And we drive the drive the living piss out of them. Awesome. So. Very cool, man. You guys got a great setup here. It's funny, like I probably don't have the money, but I'd choose that one. Yeah. <laughs> Just because. But then I don't know if I want to run that big of a wheel, though. That's pretty good. That's You got some clean stuff here. Thank you. Scott's Hot Rod and Customs. Is Scott here? He is not. Oh, okay. Now... I'm going to ask you, you can talk about these, but what about, what do you think about three link versus four link? One of the problems with three link is it gets in the way of exhaust. Okay. Um, and it's a cheaper way to go. I'm not saying it's bad at all. Yeah. Um, but we just do an equal length parallel four bar. Okay. Uh, the beauty of an equal length parallel four bar is your pinion angle does not change throughout travel, wheel travel. Um, and your left and right turns are the same. Um, with a, like a triangulated four link, where you have a shorter upper arm and a longer mm -hmm. lower arm, instead of the wheel traveling up and down, it travels, you know, at an angle, it rotates. Is that good for drag racing better or something? Or what's the purpose of it? That, usually run a triangulated link because people run out of room or they want to do any body mods or anything. Oh, okay. uh, the downside to it, as you're going through like a hard left hand turn and you hit a bump, your wheelbase will actually be shortening or lengthening as it rotates. Ours just goes straight up and down, straight so your down. wheelbase does not change. Much more stable in bumpy corners. That's cool, that's awesome. Now, obviously right here is where the axles sit, but what is the difference? For people that don't want it showing, sort of hidden, or is there a other purpose? Well, <coughs> good question. Most trucks, we do a 6 inch spread, go over under, okay. you don't have to worry about floor clearance. Okay. We go 4 inch spread on most cars, 
because you're really tight to the floor already. You know, for most, you know, most cars you don't have to do any mods. Some right. you might have to do a little notch. Um, and then we do a forward spread on the bag kits because you're going low anyway. And most trucks you just have to step notch it. Okay. Do whatever you want. And you can do bags. Heck yeah. <laughs> Hey, what, uh, you know, shocks and, and coilover stress type, uh, what do you recommend? I know it looks like you have a couple brands, or do you rock your own? Or? Yeah. So our, our standard coilovers, which is a great coilover, Allen American, out of Carson, California. Actually moved to Signal Hill near Long Beach. Um, they're all, all of ours are single adjustable and rebound. Great coilover. It's a standard twin tube design like other manufacturers. You also have the Rytec coilover made by Fox yeah. Racing. It is an upgrade. It's a monotube design by off-road shocks like Fox makes. Also single adjustable. Also great cooler. Example, all of our shop trucks that we have that we drive very hard, Yeah. we run the right techs on them. Great and better. If you're just cruising around, it's gonna be a normal driver and all that, now it's more, more than you need. Perfect, cool. If you're gonna beat on it, go with the right techs. That's awesome, man. I do, I do like, uh, I mean, I'm sure other companies have it, but this is the first time I've seen it on display that you can run your axle in different spots for various reasons. That's cool, man. Yeah, and then with our link bars, they're one and one inch by quarter inch of all DOM tubing. Wow. Um, we thread them right and left hand thread, so you don't have to take this bolt loose to adjust it. You just oh, there loosen you go. up the jam nut, twist the bar. See, that's something I would have even thought about to ask, you know? Yeah, I mean the bottom one's not too bad to change, but when you need to adjust the top bar, yeah. you in other kits you have to drop both. Mm -hmm. Whereas you don't. It's just on both sides. Stainless steel rod ends with machine in-house. Grade 8, 5 8 hardware. Well, not only do we build suspension kits, we have seven CNC machines at the shop. Uh, we make a bunch of different parts. Um, example 6772 Low Pro hood hinges with F100s. Uh, we didn't make these because we wanted to, we made them because we had to. We had a customer's vehicle that we bagged and there was no place for the hood hinge because the inner fender's gone, and now you have no hood hinge. And we didn't want to do the tilt nose or anything like that. It's been overdone. Yeah. Um, so since we have seven CNC machines, we designed and built the F100 hood hinges, and now we sell them. And they actually mount to your original inner fender mount on your firewall. And they're designed to basically clear for people that are really slamming their trucks? So yeah, you can yeah. run up to a 30-inch tall t front tire. That's awesome, man. And what's this stuff down here? Yeah, here, this is our watt sink. That's an upgrade for our rear suspension. Oh, cool. Uh, defroster vents, you know, custom defroster <laughs> vents for dash. We got remote reservoirs if you do our under dash brake pedal assemblies. And then oh, cool. on the other side, we got our larger XL reservoirs. Oh, a little okay. more styling added to them. A little more fancy. Door handles. Door handles. You know, window cranks. These fit most Chevy and Ford cars. Okay. Trucks, you know. Uh, do you guys have like a social media or a dot com or yeah. anything? Our Instagram is at Scott's Hot Rods. And you can also find us on Facebook, Scott's Hot Rods and Customs. By the way, you like your beard. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for time, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. Hey, guys, go check out Scott's Hot Rods and Customs. Give him a like, especially for that guy's beard.